native islander Matt King lives with his family in Hawaii. Their world shatters when a tragic accident leaves his wife in a coma. Not only must Matt struggle with the stipulation in his wife's will that she be allowed to die with dignity, but he also faces pressure from relatives to sell their family's enormous land trust. Angry and terrified at the same time, Matt tries to be a good father to his young daughters as they try to cope with their mother's possible death. Starring George Clooney! Oh, wow. What? That sounds a lot like The Descendants. I'm Lucas Melby! <laughs> that was a whole new pod! What are we doing? I am Jacob Telejohn. See, the, that joke is funny because it works only under a premise that we haven't watched the movie yet and yeah. we're reading the plot description and then saying we are going to watch the wrong movie? Correct. Don't think about it. It's hilarious. It's very funny. Of course, that is the Descendants and we watch Descendants. Descendants. And, and funny enough, I always pull up my wiki for reference. I literally pulled up the Descendants wiki page and had it ready just to, to reference and it was the George Clooney one. It was funny. And I had to actually update. I caught, because, I mean, I couldn't have Googled back when we started the podcast, but our description, I had it read from Under Wraps to The Descendants. Oh. So then I went back and said, oh, Under Wraps to Descendants. So we're finally making good on our original premise of getting to The Descendants. We made it. Farther than maybe some other podcasts that say they're going to do every Disney Channel original. Yeah, we're, we're cooking. Let us cook. That's because we're a whole new pod. The podcast all about Disney Channel original movies. Yeah. Maybe we need to watch The Descendants after we get through all of the other right. movies. Possibly, yeah. I think I probably would have rather watched The Descendants than Descendants. This, um... Descendants, more like Descent... 112 minutes? Into, yeah, too damn long of a movie. That's kind of what I what I felt, too. So putting on my Greg Turkington hat and breaking out some of our mundane details that, like, Jacob likes to bring up. Very long movie. Not the longest decom we've ever watched. I believe Descendants 2 is one minute longer at an hour and 55 minutes, as well as High School Musical 2 is also an hour and 55 minutes. Before the first movie in a franchise to come out at an hour and 54 minutes? That's pretty bold. I'm not saying two hours is too long for any movie. Just for a movie I have to do for this podcast is too long. And also, I can't imagine what it was like for people watching it on TV at that time. Is that like a three-hour time slot or something? Yeah, for with, with all the commercials and stuff. Yeah, like I said, this, it was a long movie. And there were certainly parts of this movie that could have been taken out. They, they probably well, could don't have made... worry, because when we give our plot synopsis, we'll take them out because we weren't paying that close of attention. <laughs> That's true. I mean, there's probably 20 minutes it could be taken out. I don't know. The and naturally, some of it boring, maybe comes boring, boring from when stuff. musicals are adapted from Broadway plays, where Broadway plays are just always like three hours long or whatever. Yeah. But musicals are kind of naturally longer because a lot of times, sometimes the music numbers move the plot forward, but a lot of the time it's just like, eh, we're doing this fun thing for a bit and everything is kind of on hold for five minutes or whatever. Yeah. And this is mostly a musical. Maybe Jacob can debate this one harder than like oh. Teen Beach Movie, but there's not a ton of songs. I think we clocked it within the first hour of this movie. With, we only had three songs. So, yeah, like, like we were kind of talking about. they come a little quicker in the second yes, half. the rapid fire later on. But yeah, in the first hour of the movie, there's like, like you said, one or two songs. And they weren't even, I don't even remember really what they were about. And some of that might be that I read and, you know, don't always trust what you read on the internet. But apparently this movie wasn't originally supposed to be a musical, a musical. Okay. But then Kenny Ortega directed the goat he, he, he always makes those directed musicals. high school musical one two and yeah. three and also hocus pocus which we might reference a little bit later on but then yeah. oh we got kenny ortega all right let's make it a musical now yeah this the music it's just not really and i think that youtube video i've talked about before I was talking about like the history of disney channel talks about like a lot of that being like it wasn't supposed to be a musical so like a lot of the songs just feel like maybe them trying to like take stuff from the moment or really just being like we need this kind of song and we've talked about Disney maybe having a bit more of an identity crisis around this time. And this is one where they're trying to, again, manufacture like the same kind of like zeitgeist coming out of High School Musical. So it's like, all right, let's get this music in. Let's make this album go platinum. Let's get the big YouTube sing-along videos coming out. <laughs> yeah. And it does just feel kind of forced and yeah. not, uh, not organic. We, we do get some, some different styles of uh, songs we've never heard before, so... Yeah, there's not, like, a real unification to it. Like, No. I guess we talked about in Teen Beach 2. No movie there. It's not a movie. There was more of a mixture of styles where, like, Teen Beach movie 
was very kind of focused with its musical style. So this feels more of like a hodgepodge. And at least Team Beach 2, I like the music in that. This one, it's like, eh, there's a couple songs that are okay. But yeah, mostly not not Man. great. And um, we get two more of these. And, and and I was pretty excited for this film. I mean, you, you can't hype it yeah, up Jacob a little bit. Jacob knew it wasn't bit. the George Clooney movie. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, I did, but I didn't. Um, Seemingly was a big deal. I think I didn't dive in, but we have the stars Dove Cameron, who was also in Cloud Nine, and she was in Michelle and Allie or something. She was in a Disney Channel show yeah. where she played twins. So I think there was kind of a combination of lots of Disney Channel stars in this. And this is going to be the last peak we have of ratings wise. This was the yeah. highest ratings basically Since up until High now. Musical. Well, no, oh. there's higher ones, but like this is like the highest they've had and everything down. You know, Descendants yes. 2, Descendants 3 and, and, and never hit the same level of viewership. And as part of that, too, movie. of course, is because of streaming becoming yes. more you know prevalent and. They can find their success other places, but this kind of just shows, again, kind of the the changing tides, the changing era. cable television. And and Disney Channel as a whole. Yeah. I guess we'll get into it. And I was already immediately kind of put off because we're going to soon be introduced to so many characters, new and old, in this movie. But first, we open it up like a classic Disney Channel, or not not Disney Channel, Disney animated movie. If we go back to episode one of the show, the thing I said that I had the most connection to Disney for was their animated movies. And this is the one that should be most appealing to me. Yeah. And we open on kind of a a classic fairy tale book, but it kind of goes in a bit of like a Shrek direction where it's like, what? That's just a tablet cover. Yeah. And they're like swiping around. Here's the story of Aradon so on they o- an iPad. They open the tablet. And I, I guess like a cool little... There's a lot of special effects I, in this excuse movie. Excuse me, Jacob. My notes here say not cool. So I don't I don't think well, anything okay. you say here well, is... Well, let me... Okay. So I'm what I kidding. thought was cool was the like... They open the tablet, you know, and I thought that was kind of like, ugh. But like, like there's like a 3D kind of like imaging of you know like a castle like the land that kind of appears out like that's maybe you get a okay big and, and massive then, lore dump there's a lot of special effects in this movie and and some of it's some of it's rough but some of it's you know pretty cool and some and, of it got jacob sitting up in his chair yeah. oh, something woke me up a little bit you know i got a little excited yeah it's a very inelegant lore dump where we learn yeah, that so in this universe backstory. beast and bell as in Beauty and the Beast, they yeah. are married, which they were at the end of the movie. Yes. And they are ruling over the kingdom of Oradon, which I don't believe is the canonical. I think technically Beauty and the Beast takes place in like France or something. Uh, when I first heard it, I thought they were saying Oregon, like the state. Yeah, or they say it like my mom, Oregon. I thought they were saying Oregon, what did they say, the, the United States of Oregon? Isn't that what they were calling I don't it? Know. I think it's the kingdom of And I, I, I was literally thinking that all the people had literally moved to the state of Oregon. I, I, that that might have been better. Uh, uh, so all of basically the good people from Disney history movies of yore are in Oradon, whereas yes. all of the villains have been sequestered this to island the prison of... island of the Isle of the Lost. Yeah. Spooky name, Isle of the Lost. Uh, which is the lost kept boys. there by like a magical force field. Yeah. Quickly and very serendipitously... As a Kingdom Hearts fan, which Jacob yeah. did not remember or know that I was a big Kingdom Hearts fan. No. And he's recently started playing this. I, I dropped it on him and I thought Lucas was going to crash the car. He started having like a. like a, I, so I sounded like Jacob on an episode uh, of the podcast. And she comes, she comes, she comes, she comes. So this is obviously a mismatch or a mishmash of all these different universes and villains yeah, clashing it, it, together. It, it, and and the, that concept's cool. Some of the character renditions aren't as yeah, cool. So it's a great concept as shown in Kingdom Hearts, but it's not yes. executed on well here. Not at all. You know, near 15 years later in The Descendant, or sorry, Descend- <laughs> Descendants. I, I feel like we're going to get a lot of hate because I feel like a lot of people love this movie. But like, Hey, you know what? I'm looking forward to the sequels because for me, yes. they can only, only go get up better. from here. And there are aspects of this movie I think we both enjoyed, you know, but not for the most part. It's it's one of the lower, you know, bottom 500 uh, uh, movies. You know, for that, or for <laughs> one fan on YouTube who was mad that we didn't like Lemonade Mouth, maybe we just, you know, hyped ourselves up too much for this and we yeah. were disappointed again. But speaking of Beast and Belle, they have a son named Ben. Yes. Uh, and he is going to soon be king, I guess, even though he's like 16 years old. 
I don't know how their monarchy. What's what's happening there. to Beast? What happens to him? I, yeah, I he don't just know. dies. <laughs> it's a very cool monarchy where they don't just rule for life. No, yeah. Uh, and he comes up with some kind of uh, early decree that he's like, "Hey, what if we were nice to some of the villains, but only four of them, and only their children?" Yeah. And this is where we cut to the Isle of the Lost and meet our ragtag bunch of heroes, or are they? Or are they? At this point, they're not. They are to zero. Mal, the daughter of Maleficent. Carlos, the daughter, sorry, the son son of of Cruella de Vil. Jay, the son of Jafar. And Evie, the daughter of the evil queen from Snow White. Yeah. That one is maybe not clear who she is at first, but she's the evil queen. Catherine and Najimi, you said. Yep. We see later on Catherine Najimi from Disney Channel fame of Scream Team, but from greater movies, uh, Sister Act as well as Hocus Pocus, which is also directed by Kenny Ortega. And here we meet them as they perform their first song, Rotten to the Core. And we open on kind of as like a tent city or like a slum where the villains live. Yeah, it's pretty run down. I mean, like you said, though, that's kind of, I guess, how it would be if they're isolated from the rest of the world. Yeah, and I kind of hope maybe one of the later Descendants movies. If it's just all bad people, of course. But they kind of maybe delve into like the politics of that, of being like, well, they're all bad, but then some of this even comes up in this movie where it's like, well, they were raised by their parents, so of course they're going to be bad. Well, yeah. if you just condemn villains and all of their offspring to forever be on Everything's this just island, be garbage. their life is always going to be fucked yes. up. Yeah. You know, it's just socioeconomically setting them up to fail because you're making them live in this shitty place. A couple of the characters I, I want to mention that you had just brought up. Carlos, the son of Corrida de Ville, was, is played by Cameron Boyce, who actually was. Was is someone that actually passed away when we when we first started our podcast up. I, I do remember like this happening and mentioning it on one of the pods. He he passed away in uh in July of twenty nineteen. So I, you know, I was I, I remember that, you know, talking about it on the pod, you know, when when, when that had happened. So that's kind so of sad. Because I think Descendants three maybe came out in like twenty nineteen or something. So maybe that's why there hasn't been another Descendants four or something since Yeah, then. he died of epilepsy. Okay. And and uh, Jay, the the son of Jafar, was someone I, I, I like, recognize him. I'm like, oh, he kind of reminds me of, like, Jacob and Twilight. And that's because he was in the Twilight um, movies. He was, like I said, just one of the uh, extra wolves. And he looks like he's in quite a few movies, kind of like. I thought you were going to say, like, he's in yeah. some good shape. Yeah, and like you said, he was in X-Men and stuff like that. I think and... he's Warpath in X-Men. Yeah, yeah. Days of Future Past. Yep, exactly. So, uh, so He's so... a side werewolf in Twilight and a side mutant in X-Men. Yeah, so I mean, there are there are a few recognizable faces, you know, and like you said, Catherine and Jimmy is in here. And, and Dove Cameron, as we yeah. talked about. Yep, yep. Mal, speaking of Dove Cameron, that is who Mal is, and she starts out and she's spray painting an M on a wall to be like, eh, I'm bad, and... This is a pretty obnoxious song. She's she's a good, uh, pretty good uh, sprayer, a pretty good tagger, tagger, tagger. Yes, that's what I'm looking for. Thank you. Because it is very LMFAO, I feel inspired. Yeah, this as this, well as some heavy dubstep break. It's definitely like no song we've ever heard before. It's it's pretty. This isn't your daddy's D. No, it's pretty. Uh, intense. I don't know how to describe it. And to put it in context, this was 2015. And I distinctly remember from the summer of either 2011 or 2012, that was peak party rock anthem time. Yes. As well as I think 2010 or 2011 was when like Skrillex was first like hitting it big. So they're kind of missing the the boat or the mark here for yeah. 2015 to start doing the dubstep stuff, which I think does kind of lend itself to this movie feeling a little try hard of like, let's appeal to the youth. The callbacks to, like, the old characters is fun, but, like, the representations of them, like, Jafar isn't, like, Jafar at all in this. No, he's, he's kind of, like, he's just kind of lame. He's also not really in the movie. No, he's, he's not a big part. And actually, we neglected to introduce the primary villain, much like Kingdom Hearts, and this is coming a year after the Angelina Jolie Maleficent movie, so I think it's yes. maybe even corporate synergy on the part of Disney to push another version of Maleficent as being important in this movie, but Maleficent is played by Christian Chenoweth, who has a legit musical theater and movie cred. She, yeah. in the original Wicked, played Glenda the Good Witch. I think she also maybe showed up in Glee in some season, probably when they did some Wicked music. 
She was also in the short-lived show Pushing Daisies, which I didn't ever finish, but I really liked that. So I like her in this. She probably has the best song, uh, but it's not a, a very competitive category. But she's evil, and she informs the kids that they have been selected to go to Ardon Academy. And they're like, no, we hate good people. But she's like, no, you're going to go because I have an evil plan for you to execute. Um, got to gotta get that. Um, Well, we won't spoil it just yet, I guess. I, I won't spoil it like I normally well, do. It's going to be hard for us to do our best to spoil some of this because we uh, talked over a lot of this. <laughs> we did. But we were... thankfully, since this movie is so popular, the Wikipedia plot synopsis is fairly detailed. Yeah. So at least at this point, I was paying enough attention that the idea is that they need to get the fairy godmother from Cinderella's wand. So yeah. just like the evil queen, fairy godmother doesn't have a name. It's just, nope, fairy, just godmother. fairy godmother. That's fine. And sure. with that wand, it's the MacGuffin. They can do magic. Whatever they want. Clearly, anything. And pull down the barrier for the Isle of the Lost. Yeah. And this scene here is where we get most... We only get to see the other villains really a couple of times, so... They're all kind of hamming it up, all of the evil queen Jafar. Yeah, you know, see, I, I doting think I, upon their their kids, being like, "Oh, you gotta get rid of your unibrow, Evie." Like, I, I think I would have maybe wanted a little bit more um, of the evil parents, I guess, throughout the movie. But I mean, really, only I mean, those are the people we know. Even yeah, though, like these are bizarro world and, and, variations. And the, the only way to really tell the difference, you know, to be remembered of what kid is which, which they kind of dress the same. You know, they have the same kind of outfits. Yeah, I guess they're all they look like, and I know that they made like descendants dolls oh. but i feel like these look like the was it like monster school or monster high i feel like i saw commercials no. for like these monster or like kind of edgy brats looking dolls like they all dress like the toy versions of themselves i feel but it's like they're the originators yeah. obviously. like like carlos the son of cruella wears you know kind of like the same kind of red black yeah, his white is the, the most stuff but like the evil queen's... most fashionable, he he, I guess he has the most fashionable clothes, yes. which is you know kind of the head of the Cruella kind of reboot of the character. Yeah, I mean she was always a fashionista. Yeah, because that's what she wanted the dogs for. Yeah, uh, but Evie at one point like seems to be wearing an outfit that's inspired by like Snow White, which is like no, that's like the opposite of who you should be representing because your mom's the villain from that movie. Uh, but you know, I it's something I knew, so I clapped when I saw it. I know that. Okay, we got this cool premise of the kids, of these villains. So what do we do? Oh, it's a it's a school movie. Getting to the third step of like Halloween Town, where it's like, yes. oh, what do we do for the third movie? Put them in high school. This one, it's like, ah, eh, let's just put them in high school right away. <laughs> and it's not even like a super magical school, because I think in no. some ways magic is like outlawed because villains use magic. Oh. And that's why a lot of like the magical artifacts are locked up in the museum. Yeah, but like we see a couple magical things happen but like you said not not much like i don't know like there's a lot of just kind of like this school has just like computers in like the background of scenes yeah. like it's super like uninteresting of a location no it, it could have been a lot better the idea of like the museum i i like but that's really about it i don't know nothing about the school is really cool i don't know it's kind of just a so dull setting the kids get there by taking in a magic limo that has it goes on like a weird golden bridge bridge light thing. bridge they, so they break through the barrier they can't get out of the Isle of the Lost any other way. They, they sing their dubstep song and the barriers breaks open. If only. <laughs> and there's a bunch of candy in the limo and it's because they, they don't have out. candy. And yes. the Isle, they don't have anything good in the Isle of Lost. So they're all like freaking out about the candy. Javar's son's munching and crunching, has chocolate over all over his face. And then they get to the school where they meet Fairy Godmother, who is the headmistress of yep. the academy. Who has, spoiler alert, a daughter there. Named Jane. Yeah. Not Fairy Godmother Jr. or anything. No. Like, yes, this is my mother, Fairy Godmother. <laughs> I am Jane. And she's kind of rude. Well, I think or you're snotty. getting her mixed up with oh. Audrey, who oh. is the daughter of Aurora. Aurora. A.K.A. Sleeping Beauty. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep, who, yep, yep. I guess Disney didn't feel confident enough in people knowing who Aurora is. So even like her daughter's like... Aurora. Sleeping, Sleeping Beauty. Beauty. My mom, Sleeping Beauty. I don't Aurora. know if you know that my father, the creator of Toaster Strudel, and my <laughs> mom, Sleeping Beauty. So yeah, Audrey is the girlfriend of Prince Ben. Prince and she ben. is the was do we know what Prince Ben was? Beauty and the Beast. Oh yes, yes, so. yes, yes, yeah. And, and he always has kind of fun regal, you know, outfits, blues like blues yeah. and yellows and stuff. Like the, the, the well, the that's kind of like the school's colors. 
But he oh, yeah, always yeah. has it with his clothing a lot of yes. time to tie it, of course, to the the ballroom scene yeah. in Beauty and the Beast. Be our guest. Oh, what a good movie. <laughs> Um, yeah, the outfits throughout the movie, I, I, I enjoyed, you know, whether it be like the, the bad kids or the good kids, you know, whatever. I, I thought the costumes were fun. But Audrey, she's not the meanest girl we've no. had in some of the more recent movies, but she's still pretty bitchy. And yeah. there's tension because basically all like the people outside of Ben all hate the villains because they're bad people and they don't trust. Them. Well, yeah, and then they kind of go into some lore of of what, why they're mad at them. What was the whole deal that you said there was a baptism? Is that what it was that they weren't invited so, to? So, especially Mal being Maleficent's daughter. Maleficent, of course, is the villain from Sleeping Beauty. And it was for Sleeping Beauty, or Aurora's christening. Everybody in the kingdom except Maleficent was invited. So Maleficent punishes the parents, really, by cursing Aurora. And then eventually yeah. she falls asleep. Uh, so that's why Audrey is mad at her. But the most important character we soon meet is like the captain of the marching band. He's supposed yep. to take them on a tour. It is Doug. Doug. The child, the son of Dopey. Yeah, he's, he's got glasses. The seven dwarves. He, he's got some Dopey vibes, right? You know. So this brings <clears> into <throat> a weird thing where this movie is forcing us to think about all of these classic cartoon characters having sex. Yeah. You want to think about Dopey fucking <laughs> Snow White? Who's he having sex? And 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 for reference, there is like a, a you smaller think about bippity boppity fairy goth <laughs> getting so, her boo bop. Dopey in the in the in the movie. I don't know if they're kids or just like do- they're, they're dwarves. They're dwarves, right? And it's in the title of the movie. Yeah, they're dwarves. But Doug, and normal guy. He is just a normal sized person. So unless Dopey's screwing like an like a giant, I don't know how that. Well, works. that happens in actual like with little people. As two little people, if they marry, they can have. Oh. A normal size. I, I honestly don't know. I, it's I just know that. you know, it's like recessive genes. And, yeah, or, or you know, not exactly that. There is like a smaller person in this movie. In not, like not, one scene. Yeah, no, obviously not that they're a big presence, but but we do see. Tell John noticed. We do see like an aerial type character in a wheelchair at some point throughout this movie. There is a fan theory I have yes, upon online. That there's a theories. girl in a wheelchair that I think shows up in later movies as well. Seems like she maybe has red hair. So the fan theory is that she's aerial. But it's my understanding she never actually has, like, lines or any. So. No. That was far they, more they interesting, do, do, the theory, they than do, anything else. They do movie. focus on her uh, quite a bit at the end of the movie in the, the big dance There's one scene. shot where she's framed. Well, I mean, but you see her, in the at least in the background. But, yeah, she's just well, kind of... She only stands up because she's in a wheelchair. You would say they were focused on anybody else in the background. Well... And then you're going to be like, yeah. is that Sneezy, son? <laughs> I, uh... Ah, huh? oh, tits! That's <laughs> Doc's cousin! <laughs> So they're mean to Doug, and they yeah. say, we're going to go find our Talk own dorms. Buggy. Here I'm already saying in my notes, we aren't paying close attention. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and they just, they need to find the wand, and the wand happens to be at, at the, the museum. artifact museum. So this is like the coolest location in the movie. Oh, I, I guess there is the lagoon or whatever you want to call it. It's kind of cool. Apparently but... that was the Enchanted Lake. Okay. We'll get Enchanted to Lake. But the museum is pretty cool, how it's laid out in the lobby of it. It has a spinning wheel from sleeping, or no. Yep, Sleeping, yep Beauty. Sleeping Beauty. That she pricked her finger on. Um, and there's a security guard there. Yeah, and, and who, who's the one that... The, Mal m- uses some kind yeah. of magic to then make him prick his prick finger. Prick his finger. He curls up in a ball and falls Which asleep. Which I was like, I didn't think... I'd have to rewatch Sleeping Beauty, but I thought it was that it was Aurora. Wasn't that the whole thing? Is that she was cursed, and that's why she had to go to this fairy... Or with the, the fairies to live there, because she was had to be protected by everything. Yeah. And... She, you know, accidentally pricks her finger. And uh, again, wow, I should have just watched <laughs> Sleeping Beauty. What, what a fantastic art style in that movie. So well realized. Uh, anyways, Descendants, the security guard goes they, to sleep. And then they pick the lock somehow. Which, who know. is the security guard's parents? <laughs> oh, true. Good point. <laughs> they sneak in and they find the wand. Oh, actually, no, well, before they no, get yeah, to the wand. Yeah, there's quite a bit that happens. They, they kind of walk through and they see some artifact. Like, there's like a, I don't know, they see an art, like an artifact. It has the rose, I think, from. Oh, I missed that. Like the rose in like a case. And there's several other artifacts in the room, which are kind of cool to see. I wish I could. Yeah, could so many them. of these, like the rose, that <clears> is, I guess I don't remember how that ends. But, I mean, the rose is very important yes. to the beast. But I guess actually once he turns human, maybe it's not. But, like, I don't know. Some of these things seem weird to just put in this hall yeah so there's quite a few things and then but i the, guess if you are working on the, the understanding that all villains there are no bad people outside of this island then yeah maybe you need this you know 
Don't lock your doors in Oregon or anything. Though. In Oregon. So they, they eventually make their way to... Um, the Hall of Villains. The, the Wax Museum of Villains. And what's but there's in, only the four parents. Yes, there. it's only the four parents, which is kind of like uh, okay, yeah, whatever. Yeah, the the notable villain of the magical movies, <laughs> Cruella Deville. <laughs> so yeah, I, it's, it's all the parents, and and you know, kind of like we, we notice they're they're admiring them, like wow, like these are like you know scary looking people, and then they do they they look definitely more menacing than we were introduced to them earlier in the film. It, it does look like they're actually just like real. I mean, they don't like even like wax. I was like debating whether yeah, people they were just standing there, you know. Because it's kind of hard to tell because Christian Chenoweth was is so heavily made up as yeah. Maleficent that I think it maybe was just her standing there. But then well, she comes to life. Yeah, Maleficent does in in like a dream sequence. Okay, like many. Uh, well, m- it was one of those things where it's like, well, maybe we weren't paying attention, and there no, was some yeah, way for yeah. them to summon yes. her here. At, at first, we didn't know. Yeah, if it was just in her imagination or not. You know, if, if her mother was sending. Whatever a message, to but her. I was like, well, if it was that easy, then why do they need the one? But this is exactly. just in Jacob's mind, the dream sequence, and it's in Mal's mind. So she has it's mostly a mm. Maleficent song, and it's not the first um, Kenny Ortega dream sequence because you know we've seen many in the High School Musical movies, or so. at least, well, again, gotta get your head in the dream, game. This is maybe gotta get you gotta get you gotta a daydream sequence. This is more of a dream sequence song than basically any of the other songs. Like get your get your head in the game. They're still at practice there. Yes, but I don't. We're just under the impression that they're not actually singing y- here. That's this the is point, all yes. within her head. Oh yeah, hundred percent. So we are in agreement. We are shaking hands off my. We're shaking. Right now. We're shaking our hands. We're slapping and tickling. This song is evil like me. Mal kind of enters it and comes up a little bit at the end, but it's primarily Kristen Chenoweth with his Maleficent. And this is very much more of a like a classic villain song, yeah, musical theater. Is kind this of is song. this the only parent song we get? Yeah, otherwise they're uh, all sung by the, the kids. And I found the parts where Mal came in, like her voice didn't really mesh well with Christian Chenoweth, yeah. and it's just like just let her do, let, let her, her do, co- this let thing. her cook. It's not like the greatest song we've ever had, because uh, we don't really get villain songs in a lot of these musicals. No. Uh, but there was one, but I don't remember what it was. It wasn't Teen it's, Beach. It's fine. That's for sure. It's fine. My notes say, dream! <laughs> yes. So she wakes up out of her dream. Um, they came back to get her because she's, you know, she's been here for a few minutes and they need her to go get the wand or whatever. And they need her help to get the wand. So the wand is like suspended in some kind of magical barrier. And I think it was had Jay, a security alarm. Jay, Jay tries to crawl under and, and like some force field just shoots him back across the room and then an alarm starts blaring where the, the, the sleep guard wakes up and then... So yeah, I guess the curse of the spinning wheel wasn't that strong. So they don't get the wand. It's still like behind this force field. They're like, we better get out of here. So they, they, they run out of there. So then we get into about 30 minutes or so where nothing really of importance happens. Yeah, this is when I think we just started talking and just BSing. It's a lot of just school shenanigans More starting Kingdom out. Heart talk, I think we were doing, you know. We're talking like, about Kingdom Hearts. Yeah. Uh, starting with Magical Lacrosse. And that was okay, I guess. You know, like, like we get like a pretty intense close-up shots of Jay, Jabbar's son. He's just mowing everybody down. He's plowing people over, and like people are like getting out of the way because they're just scared of him. And he scores. But it was a goal. kind of an awkward thing where we see Carlos put a helmet on to play. Oh, we don't yeah, actually. Yeah. I don't feel he like we see Jay. Joy. So then we actually we see him doing stuff, but we don't realize it's him. That, or I didn't realize it was him right away because he has a helmet on. But you can still see his longer hair, kind of. Well, it's still not. I knew it was him plowing people down. Uh, but the way this game works is like lacrosse, except. It's a magic ball shields. that adheres to like your stick, and it, yeah, it's and not a shields. net. Or were the were the were the, nets. the oh, they, they throw no the nets. ball into a net? Yes, to score. But are, are yeah, they swords no... that they're like no holding the balls onto? They're just sticks. Huh? I didn't get the impression they were supposed to be swords. No. I... And then in the middle of the field, there's what's called a the gap. kill zone. Kill zone where people can shoot uh, like um, ballistas. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. At... Crossbows or something, right? Yeah. I think yeah. the proper term is. Ballista or Balliste or something yeah. like that. This has also dubstep playing along with it yeah. the whole time. Like, I, I, yeah! I, I, I wouldn't have been surprised if there was a song that broke out here, but there didn't, you know, unfortunately. Yeah, There's... we thought it could have been a get your head in the game kind of moment. Yeah. I joked about, or I didn't even really joke, be like, well, he's Jafar's son, but he seems a little bit maybe more like Aladdin. So this is where you can put in, you know, one step, oh. I'm scoring a goal. 
That would have been steps. good. Carlos, oh. yo. <laughs> oh, say you, you should. We should rewrite the movie. That's Again, ah, better nuts. movie than Come on. Descendant. Come on, Kenny Ortega, get your get your crap together. But uh, there's also cheerleading practice going on. And did, did all the evil girls did they join cheerleading? No, no. I think the only person of note in the cheerleaders is Audrey. Audrey is okay. not that notable. Okay, okay. so I, we don't need to worry they were about. There. No, okay. I, I I couldn't remember what uh, all happened with them, but they were just practicing. Evie though has a miniature evil mirror from Snow White that she, she uses, uses as like a cheat sheet. So yeah, cheat in math, which she then runs into our boy Jedediah Goodacre. Oh, hell yeah, Jedediah. Who we would know, I think, is the character Trip. I think his name was yep. in Zapped who yep. was super bro, who farted on Zendaya, yeah. and she maybe made shit or piss himself in public. <laughs> Zendaya, that hey, happen. door still open. <laughs> yeah, come on, Let come us on talk in. through that scene and what that was like. We need you. Uh, he plays Chad Charming, daughter... Ch- Chad Charming. Why do I keep screwing up? Son of Cinderella daughter and Prince of. Charming. You don't know how he identifies. Which is an amazing name for this character. And he yes. is basically is like a trip. Name. And he wants Evie to help him, like, cheat or something. Yeah. Doug is hanging around in the yeah, background, he, he, jealous. Like, he's, I, I wanted Doug, Douglas, Doug to fall through the, the bleachers. Because he, he just does a slick move where he just kind of slides on in through the bleachers. But, yeah, he could have gotten stuck in there. Because, like I said, he's Dopey's son, right? Yes. So why isn't, he, why isn't he more Dopey? I mean, he's got glasses and he's a nerd. Ah. Which, in a way, isn't really what Dopey's supposed to be. Dopey's supposed to be stupid. Dopey like sure. that. Well, Dopey doesn't talk. No, but he's... He's, the, like, the only one who does not talk. Doesn't his, like, tongue just hang out all the time? No, I don't... I haven't watched Snow White in quite a while. I just... He's I, the purple hat one, right? I, I... He's the one... He's Dopey. He's the only one without yeah. a beard. Yeah. His face yes, kind of creeps exactly. me out. Yeah. I hear I made a note that 50 minutes we're in and nothing is happening and we've only had two songs. Yep. Uh, Mal gets in good with fairy godmother's daughter Jane by being like, your mom doesn't let you change your hair? What a bitch. And Jane's like, yeah, I fucking hate my mom. I'm going to tear my dress to look like a slut. <laughs> Basically. So she, Which isn't really what happens, she but tears, like, it's supposed to be like, oh my god, we tore our nice dress. She rips her dress and then the fairy godmother's daughter rips hers, right? Well, after the hair. Side character Lonnie shows Lonnie, up. Lonnie. Who is an Asian girl. And oh, seems yes, kind yes, of weird Mulan's that everybody's daughter. like, huh? Who are you? And she's like, I'm Mulan's daughter. And, and she has like a black traditional hair. And then they magic it to make her have like brown, brown curly. Locks. Yeah. It's like, okay. So that's kind of weird. Mm. And like the premise. That's what's so <clears> weird is like when every single character here has movie significant yes. parents. Then it's like there are side characters, like the coach of the magical lacrosse team. Who's his mom and dad? And yeah. this gets into a weird situation of like I e- know eugenics that. or whatever. It's like, who are your parents? This has to be important. What is your pure magic pedigree or whatever? Oh, yeah. you had a villain on um, twice removed from you? Go to Isle of the Lost. <laughs> I-, I guess I would have enjoyed them spelling out who who each character was. To me, that's a fun aspect of it. Like, they didn't need to have Dopey's son in the movie, but it's, you know, kind of fun that they... No, they definitely did not need to have Dopey's <laughs> it's son. It's fun that they, they have those, though. So I, I'm kind of curious to see if the, the future movies introduce new characters. The, the future movies actually just open with a slideshow, a PowerPoint presentation of everybody's <laughs> parents. There's also a, like, side book series. So I don't know, maybe at the back of the book, like in Game of Thrones or oh, something, they're, they're there's all... just a, a full layout of everybody's parents or okay. something. A list of characters. So we really talked or didn't pay attention, but I found on Wikipedia that their plan to get the wand is that there's going to be a coronation ceremony for Prince Ben and that the wand is involved in the ceremony. So if she can be if Mal can be Prince Ben's girlfriend, she'll be closer to the wand and grab it during the ceremony. But Ben is boyfriend with Audrey. So what do we do? They don't make a love potion. They make a love cookie. Yes. Which looks like a weed cookie. She carries around in the in a little. I mean, as much as bag. any cookie looks like a weed. Well, cookie. just the fact that it's it's a single cookie in a plastic bag. She's keeping in her pocket. It's kind of weird, but for the record, Jacob isn't eating weed cookies no. all the time. Either. I've seen them. Um, <laughs> you make it seem like uh, yeah, weed cookies should just be indistinguishable from any cookies. It's not like they got like a freaking hemp rope hanging oh. of them or whatever so they're in yeah so they're in the kitchen right whipping up the cookie batter and stuff and they're missing an emotional tear a tear a human tear, a human tear of tear sadness of sad of, of emotion a pure sadness oh yeah pure, pure sadness yeah, yeah you, you're right and lonnie 
Mulan's daughter again, walks in and he's like, oh, what's going on, guys? Ooh, you're making cookies? My mom, Mulan, used to make me, I think she even says chocolate chip cookies. Yes. And I'm like, yeah, and then they make a reference to chip and something. I don't in a way, know it's kind of was. funny that they're not like, my mom, Mulan, was oh, making me fortune cookies. Oh, that would have been too far. <laughs> but so it's weird that Mulan would make chocolate chip cookies, but yeah. it's kind of funny in its own way. And all the villains are like, what are you talking about? Like, did you're, And then she says something along the lines, didn't your parents mom love you or something right and then they talk about like parents, no, our caring parents for are you. villains they're yeah mean. she's like oh my god that's so sad and then she drops a tear and they immediately like rub their finger underneath her face to catch the tear and then they throw it in the the batter yeah and she's like what the heck just happened and then she just kind of leaves yeah she leaves and then i think they finish the cookie and then they, they they finish the cookie and then jay tries to act all suave on on her, right? It's because she tasted, like, some of the batter. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, So yeah. they were thinking, eh, maybe it's still good, but it wasn't. No. So the next day, she kind of, like, reverse psychology's Ben into eating the cookie, because she's just like, here, eat this solo cookie. And he's like, nah, I'm okay. And then she's like, but then I'm going to eat the cookie. And he's like, give me the cookie. <laughs> <laughs> so then he eats it, and it seems to have an immediate effect where he wants yeah, to. Yeah, he wants to sing loud yeah, and Sing proud. Mal's name from the <clears throat> rooftops, and they're got to be like, oh, settle down. Yeah, stop. Not now. Because it's time for, apparently, the big game. The big game. Where Jay and Carlos uh, help them, the Magic Lacrosse team to win. We come in in like the last 30 seconds of the game. Yeah, and they <laughs> naturally win. Which I'm appreciative that that wasn't important, really. It's just it's like this is a big the, school gathering. big game, Lucas. And everybody's there cheering on the team. And then after the game, Ben gets the announcer's microphone and professes his love to Mal. Has well, the crowd he makes the crowd out. spell, M, give me an M. M, give me an A. A, give me an L. M, What's that me spell? An and like nobody, so, so his... Girlfriend is like, what's she was going around with the cheers because she's a cheerleader. But she's like, what is he spelling? It spells male. And she's like, what the? You know, she's getting all mad. And so then he launches into only like the third song of the movie, I think. Yeah. Did I mention solely sung by him? Yeah. And we both got kind of like maybe 50s or 60s yeah, era yeah, vibes. This is Elvis Presley out there. Well, he's kind of doing like something a, like the hip stuff yeah, and like definitely the his, dropping his the dance mic moves. and stuff. Yeah. And the, the song itself reminded me of like Hairspray or maybe a okay. little Grease, but more Hairspray. It was fun enough. I mean, there's so few songs that I'm like, oh, this is pretty good. I liked it more than Rotten to the Core. Speaking of Rotten to the Core, that, that song describes itself. <laughs> Yeah, it ends in Audrey, Audrey, Sleeping Beauty's daughter. Yep. Sad, Mal, happy, Ben, horny. Horny. And then Real horny. Mal is getting help from Evie to put some makeup on because she's having a big date with Ben where they go and have a yeah. sensual, I thought it was a river, but apparently it's a lake where they have a picnic. And it doesn't, it's very small. There's like a gazebo, not a gazebo, there's like a cement. It, it fits Pillard. as well as callback to Camp Rock 2, where there's that one time yeah. where the piano's played on, like, a cliffside. Yeah. Or it, it, I, I mean, it, pretty setting, I guess. I don't know. It's, it's, it looks magical, you know, kind of deal. But, they're, yeah, they have a picnic, and they're eating strawberries and little tomatoes. They're just popping them in their mouths and eating them. Um, and then they start rubbing each other's lips and stuff, which is kind of weird. Well, she had some schmutz on her schmutz. lips. Schmutz. So oh, she, was, was, chicken was, grease. Yeah, I thought, I'm like, what the fuck's she eating? Like, biscuits? <laughs> oh. Got a big, like, summer sausage Hank sitting there, too. And he says he's going to go for a dip, right? He just says, I'm going to go for a swim. And she just starts singing? He, yeah, he takes off his shirt and either changes into a swimming suit or had a swimming suit. Like, not a Speedo or anything. This is, like, jorts-length swimming trunks. Yeah. Uh, but it's as good as you can get for Disney Channel. And, yeah, he's swimming and she sings. So we get another song in pretty quick order. And this is If Only. Yeah. Uh, it's very much, I felt like, a pop ballad of the, the mid-2010s. Like, yes. I don't know, like Kelly Clarkson probably isn't the right name. Maybe like a little Katy Perry or something. Ooh, okay. okay. And this is like, eh, what do we show? How about we just show every scene of interaction between Mal and Ben thus far in the movie, including at the end of the montage, one that was like two minutes ago of them walking on the bridge to get to the lake. Yeah, yeah, I... Disney's done this often where they have like the weird, you know, like I said, the flashback montages and it was, it was odd because they were showing clips that literally happened like 
five minutes ago walk, when I said walking across the bridge. So I was, oh, I don't know, whatever. And I believe I why so... part of the message of this song is her expressing some regret. She's like, oh, I think I really do like Ben. No regrets. But then I have used this spell on him. So what does this really mean? Oh, I'm a fraud. Then the kids, I don't really know what the point of the conversation was, but they have a video call with their parents that's facilitated by the fairy godmother. And they're all like, hey... I don't. I think they're basically trying to be like, "Hey, you're supposed to be doing evil stuff," and they're like, and- "Nah, we don't <laughs> like you anymore." <laughs> so then, because they're feeling pressure from their parents, they launch in. We got to plan our operation for the coronation ceremony, and I think maybe here again, purely based off of the Wikipedia plot synopsis, is that Mal is like, nah, "I think I want to like reverse the love effect." So yeah, I'm gonna make him a antidote brownie. Ooh. To give to him. Weed cookies, weed brownies, you know, can't go wrong. But before we get to the ceremony, it is family day at Ordon Academy. And Ben and the other good students perform a horrendous crime against Big. humanity. Yikes. Acapella glee club style rendition of Be Our Guest. And I've already talked about how my history with Disney not so much with Disney Channel, but with these animated movies. And like, like that's a song you love. If you follow me on Letterboxd, as all of you should. And if fat underscore tomato, you would see that Beauty and the Beast is listed as one of my four favorite movies of all time. That's the box we got, right? The Disney box? No, we got fucking no. Cinderella. Cinderella, that's what we got. Cinderella. Eat my yeah. ass, Disney. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, be better. So this is not only like, hey, we're stealing a song from a much better movie and a much better song than anything we have in this, but then we're going to fucking stab it in the fucking back 800 times and kick it into a fucking ditch (laughs) and cover it with ecto-cooler green eye Ectoplasm all over me. (laughs) Made me so mad. Yeah. So again, if it wasn't enough to just have all these characters that we know from better movies, it's like, no, we're going to actually take a better movie song and, and make you wish, it. like, oh, I wish I just was listening to the real version of the song. <laughs> Freaking our high our school guest, version of guest. Beauty and the Beast did a better version of Be Our Guest than fucking Descend. Preach, Lucas. Go off, King. Slay. <sighs> he's red in the face. His body, he's trembling right now with anger. All right. Coming back down. Yep. yep. Ben invites under the effect of his love potion. Or is he? Ooh. Invites Mal and her friends to play croquet with King and Queen Beast and Belle. Croquet, what a game. Croquet, uh, bocce ball, all the yard sports. All those love. yuppie fuckers. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I like croquet and bocce I, ball. My family regularly pl- or <laughs> used to play croquet more yeah. uh, when we go camping. We sometimes set it up. But during the croquet game, I guess I wouldn't have known this character unless I saw Wikipedia, but Mal runs into Queen Leah. Who was oh. like, ooh, don't I know you? And she's like, eh, I don't know. But then Audrey comes in and says, oh, grandma, mother oh. of Sleeping Beauty. What the heck? <laughs> Grandmother of me, daughter of Sleeping Beauty. Oh, no. Don't talk to her. She is bad. And then Queen Leah is like, oh, my fucking God, you're the worst person. You cursed my family and all this shit. And then basically the whole school, even though everybody knew there were villains before, like turns on them. Yeah. Uh, Chad Charming gets involved somewhere here. And get sprayed with like magic perfume. I don't know. Again, we weren't paying super close attention. But now everybody's mad at the villains except Ben. And the villains are very mad at the heroes. Uh, here in an act of rage, Mal reverses Jane's magic hair to go back to her bad haircut. And one yes. guy goes, Does he say you? Or like gross? Yeah. Somebody some in the verbal. Goes, oh, gross. Yeah. Yeah. She looks fine. Some verbal reaction. And then I think it's basically just coronation time. Yeah. They're in a, a nasty looking green screen chapel thing straight out of Twitches or something. Ahead of it, though, Ben is in, I think, the magic limo with Mal. And I think, again, solely based on Wikipedia. Yep. This is where Mal is trying to give him the antidote. And we learn that actually, possibly by the effects of the enchanted lake that they went to their picnic in and he went swimming in. The spell oh, it, was reversed because so at this point he was still acting of his own volition and he actually just has feelings for Mal and that's why he was being nice. So was that related to that weird glowing rock that he found? Possibly. Maybe. Yeah. She find He gives her a magic rock and says, make a wish. And she just chucks it into the lake. <laughs> we don't know what, what she if, wished. What for. if she wished that he no longer loved her? 
Maybe. Oh, see, I think there's a plot hole there. They should have talked about that well, more. We try to bring up any plot holes. Because <laughs> uh, more so than maybe You've any movie it. we've covered in this movie, <laughs> we've missed so much of this. Yeah. You should have made it 20 minutes shorter, man. They should have just somehow found a, a different day that I would be a little more focused. And that was the day we watched the movie. So, you know, it's fully on Disney Channel's fault that I just wasn't that focused. <laughs> But honestly, a lot of this movie is really boring, and I don't like any of the characters. <laughs> so, no, yeah, there's there's nothing really... The music wasn't good, the characters suck, yeah, the, it's... Mo- the plot is boring. Let's finish this movie, then. So, she's super happy. She's like, oh, he does like me. Maybe we shouldn't do the bad stuff. So this gets really weird, because during the ceremony, when they're pulling out Fairy Godmother's wand to do whatever thing they have to do to the future king... Jane grabs it and fucking starts like shaking it around. It's sparking and it shoots something to the Isle of Lost to bust a hole in its shield around it, which yes. I assume would have been something similar to what Mal would have done. But this just happened because she was she didn't know what the fuck she was doing. Yeah. And she was doing this because she was mad at her mom, I, I think because of being too controlling or something. I don't know. It's lashing stupid. out. But then Mal grabs the wand from her. But Ben kind of talks her down and she's like, no, I do want to be good. And she gives this big, long speech that is super fucking on the nose and stupid. We are not our parents. I want to be with Ben. I want to have love. Maybe love is is good. Maybe having friends is good. And uh, the friends, all the villain children agree that being good. Hey, good things are good. Good things are good. It's nice. Just, you know. Treat others just as you want to be treated. Fact. But it's Maleficent time. Because of the hole in the shield, she was able to magic her way here and says, I'm back. I'm back. Maleficent freezes everyone. And yeah. Mal cries and talks about how love is good. You know, Trump's being evil. And this is where I told Jacob. Minor spoilers. This sounds a lot like stuff in Kingdom Hearts. But this is making Kingdom Hearts where it's talking about light is great, Mm -hmm. beats darkness, all that stuff, that makes Kingdom Hearts look like fucking Shakespeare compared to the sentence. Because this is so bad. Go off, King. Blah, blah, blah. Maleficent turns into a dragon, and everybody's frozen, but she's not killing anybody. She's just chasing the villains around, trying to get the wand back. But Mal, like, uses the power of love and good to turn Maleficent into, like, a really small lizard. There's a dramatic thing where she's staring down the dragon who's got green eyes and Mal's eyes are turning green. And I'm just like, get on with it. Yeah. I'm hungry. <laughs> and that was an hour ago. <laughs> oh, what could have been? Uh, And then all's good. People are happy. They're like, hey, your destiny isn't decided by your parents being bad. We're allowed to like you because you've saved our lives. Okay, cool. Yeah. Then it's a big final, really the first group song. I guess the one that Ben sang. We're had all some in group this dances. together. They should have they should have reskinned that song. Sure. Set it off though is the name of this song, and it's not horrible. Set it off though, I don't know. It's kind of just what does that mean? That's not magical. This is is this a magical movie, Jacob? You know, I would. <laughs> Honestly, I, is it? There's a little magic. It's a magical movie. It's a magical movie. It's yeah. possibly one of the most... Was it magical in my heart? Was it magical in my heart, Lucas? Possibly one of the most mundane magical movies yes. you could have. Twitches. Twitches. Twitches is also a pretty mundane magical Twitches. movie. But Twitches, I think, is more magical. This one had a lot better effects. It, it, it's definitely... Um, Again, very low bar. Yes. It, it's definitely... Like you said, the, the, what did you say? The dragon took 2,000 hours to make? That's the, what it said on AskJeeves.com. The, the dragon was okay. I like the dragon. I thought the dragon looked pretty cool. You know, I mean, for a decom, obviously it didn't have a massive budget. You know, so it wasn't well, like probably had a bigger one than a lot of yes, these movies. Yes, yes, but but I mean, the dragon bigger was one cool. than Bad Hair Day. They didn't need to spend any money in Bad Hair Day. <laughs> but no, like the dragon. Um, you know, we, we I, I like the costumes, the sets. You know, we, a couple we, of sets. We, we still are. We don't need to do the final nah, wrap up yet. Because, we want to talk about the big dance because it's very important. That villains are dancing with the good people. Yeah. And yeah. every character gets hooked up with somebody. Most importantly, Doug, son of Dopey, hooks up and dances with Doug, Evie. Son of Dope. Mal, of course, is with Ben. Carlos, I think, gets with Jane. 
And then Jay gets with Audrey, which is like, I don't know, this is them just pulling together opposite sex characters. <laughs> Be like, who do we have left? Uh, the girl who was a total bitch the whole time, and Jay, who was the, I don't know. I guess he was hot. He's buff and has long Ooh, hair. Yeah. Uh, that's what the girls think. Okay. And okay. me. Yes. And yeah, okay. Then the movie is just about to end, but we see Mal turn to the camera, her eyes turning green, and internal monologue something and says like oh you thought this was the end oh we're just getting started or some shit like that and then we get reminded that this was all on an ipad the whole time and we pull out of the ipad and they close the cover on the ipad and i'm like two more of these huh okay <laughs> yeah and, and like as you said it can only get better from here there were some things that i enjoyed of it you know as i alluded to you know several minutes ago but i think the movie was too long I think That's the, it. <laughs> the sets could have been better. Like I say, I, I like the little lake, secret lake. I like the museum. But other than that, like, they're just a boring school. It's not even like a fun. Yeah, I don't I even don't think know. I like the premise. I think the whole, it's just like Muppet Babies or some shit. Like, I, why do I care about the kids of these people yeah. when it's like, they're hardly characters because it's like they're just like mini versions of their parents. But I mean, I mean that's deal. Like, like, it's like Kingdom like, Hearts has those mixtures of villains. Yeah. But you just get the villains. Yeah. Like the villains are who we like. They're but, the classic character. But I mean, we, we were obviously never going to get a decom about Disney no, villains. We got to get the teens in. There. Yeah. So you get the teens. I don't know. I mean, it's kids can relate. I mean, I mean, what kids kid, can relate? What kid hasn't seen? My you know, mom's the, a villain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Our parents are. Mean Which where are all the, the fathers that. and mothers in the situation with these? Like who is Jay's yes. mother? Who is Mao's father? Like I said, I, I would have liked Mao's that. I would have liked more. Is Oogie Boogie from oh. Nightmare Before Christmas. Oh. Ooh, if they try to do any live action version of Nightmare characters, that would look rough. Ooh. That will be like the true point of no return for Disney yes. is if they do a live action version of Nightmare Before Christmas. Yes. Because that's the thing is like this Little Mermaid movie coming up. Obviously, I don't care about uh, Ariel being black. What I care about is the movie looking dark as shit, and you can't see anything. It's yeah, like, that was Javier Bardem odd. is in that movie. I could hardly make out who he was. Oh, I, I didn't know he was in it. <laughs> and like, I don't want to see a realistic looking crab. That's well, not, they, they that's got, not right. <laughs> they got rid of the seagull. It's not even a seagull anymore. It's like some weird bird, weird other kind of bird. Well, that's yeah, that's unfortunate. But I don't know. You know what? It's almost like these cartoons. Like, Scuttle the Seagull works oh. because he's designed within a cartoon medium it's where he can easily do more creative scuttle and silly is gone. stuff. It's not even Scuttle. Why do we need to put these things scuttle. into live action? It gets the people going. I don't, I don't know. There's some mm. theories people they're, have they're out there. They're not creative. I mean, like, we want to just get, like, a pop because people will go on nostalgia, maybe take their kids. And There's being no like, creative. Well, this was kind of shit. But the original is still there, and then it draws them back to watch yeah. the original. There's and nobody's ever going to... None of these remakes are ever going to supplant the original movies no not a chance maybe pete's dragon <laughs> oh peter's dragon huh they'd have to like really go in deep like yeah maybe like update sword in the stone but like can you really make a live action squirrel look as sexy as the one in the original movie what about that one like early D- disney movie like down south one the... oh no they're not gonna... <laughs> they're finally like trying to like erase all connection to that by maybe even just getting rid of splash mountain it seems so Clearly, we're getting off base. I haven't really given my final thoughts on this movie. I don't like it very much. Yeah, it was just long, boring. Don't like the characters. Music wasn't that good. There wasn't that many songs. Yeah. Hopeful that we have the characters established in this one. Maybe the next movie, we got a little bit of a tease of what that's going to have. Sounds like more Isle of the Lost stuff. Sounds like more of a, a stark conflict happening where a lot of like the conflict of this it's like, oh, we got to get the wand. But like that was so backburnered for just like boring school stuff. Yeah. So hopefully the sequel is more focused. They'll know this one is going to be musical from like generation when they're coming up with it. So maybe it'll have better songs. Maybe it'll have more songs. Uh, d- does our guy do the next movie? Or I no? think he does all of them. Well, OK. Kenny Ortega. This was a little downer, but I, I have faith he can bounce back. Kenny Ortega, I looked up, he's like he's like 70-something years 72. old. 72. He's pretty old. April 18th, his birthday's coming up. So, I, yeah. Again, we talked about the kid who died. Maybe Descendants 4 just won't ever happen. Because maybe Kenny Ortega oh, will not, die. Is he not? Do you think they'll make a 4? I'm kind of wondering that if that guy dying maybe hasn't affected some of their plans. Probably. Because I feel like 
some kind of like Descendants series or something on Disney Because he was in Descendants 3, which came out in 2019. He was a post-hominous release. Post-humus. Humus, post-humus. Posthumous. Posthumous, uh, sorry, sorry. If I'm going to correct you, let me actually correct you correctly. <laughs> Posthuma. Posthumous. Appar- apparently, there is something called Wicked Woods, a Descendants Halloween story. That he's also one that comes after Descendants I Three. I think that's like a, like a twenty-minute like okay. animated thing okay. or something. I was. I don't even think that's on Disney Plus. So. And he was in a show. Okay, I don't care. Three years no. after his death. Rest in peace, guy. Yeah, R- I don't give a fuck. R- 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 I want to finish this episode. R- R.I.P. Cameron Boyce. Never remember. Uh, no, they probably wouldn't stop nine eleven. They didn't have any magic. Actually, I was going to say, because they would side with the villains, but... Oh, that true. <laughs> They're the ones taking down the, the plane. They're like, no. Oh, my God, I did Yeah, Maleficent is like, you have to go work with Al-Qaeda. These are the first, yeah, the first characters to support it. Wow. Jafar like, is taking that thing down. They're dubstep dancing as they're like... Oh, no. They have box that cutters in odd. their hands. Being like, All right, you guys stay there. Oh, We're taking God. this plane over. This We're is, rotten to the core. This is awful. Well... It's true. We'll have to come up it's, with at least true. two more versions of Never Remember, potentially. Yeah. Maybe we'll actually remember what we say, so next time we can't just say they would side with Al-Qaeda. True. But for now, you can let us know how offended you are about us talking about 9-11 <laughs> again, about how we didn't like Descendants. Zendaya, shout out. Or how you just don't like us in general by writing us at a whole new pod at gmail.com. Find us on various podcast platforms. Last week, we read off a review from iTunes, five-star review. That was really cool. Shortly after that, though, I believe we got our first one-star rating. Really? No review for that, though. But honestly, it's kind of like a... Well, we have a hater. Yeah. You know, you got to kind of... Haters are our motivators. It's kind of a sign What did that bring us down? Like three and a half? No, 4.6. Okay. So kind of like more believable Who one-star is that? Who one-star? That's weird, I mean, it's basically who... Who would three star something? You know, yeah. it's five or one. But that kind of, you know, makes us feel real because we gotta, yeah. we gotta hate. We gotta it. go out there and support us, though. I want to see a sign one that or you two kind more of made it reviews. to have a hater. Go show some love. Maybe and honestly, I was like, what could they hate? But I'm like, well, I probably shouldn't bring up too much stuff that they could hate. Maybe yeah. that we make a 9/11 joke every <laughs> single episode. Triggered. Or that we just didn't like Lemonade Mouth. Yeah, or maybe. maybe they're like the number one. Johnny Kapahala fan. That is there true. Or something. There's a lot that people could be upset about. Or maybe they just, I mean, hey, I have a co host who's Jacob Teletron. <laughs> like, What's not to love? There's plenty of ammunition, I guess, for oh. a one star rating. But, but if you want to be kinder than that, rate us on Apple Podcasts, wherever else you can find us Stitcher, Spotify, Twitter. follow us on those places. Follow YouTube. us on Twitter at AWN Pod, as well as on YouTube. YouTube. Subscribe, like, comment. Yeah, I haven't gotten any comments for a bit. Uh, maybe this one will spark some and be like, yeah. hey, uh, pay attention closer to the movies next time. The Descendants. And I would say, maybe I need a break for you, me to start paying more attention. You thought you loved The Descendants. Go and rewatch it. So the plan is, our next weekend to normally record, Jacob and I will be going to Anime Detour. Nerd con. Local anime convention in Minnesota. And the very small chance... That anybody listening to this goes to Anime Detour and you somehow see us and would recognize us or hear our voice. I'm doing three panels there. Come say hi. Don't expect that to actually ever happen, but throw it out there. That could be neat. You you gotta, yeah, you gotta make it happen. But I'm more bringing it up because their next weekend to normally record would be when we're going to Detour. So we're going to try maybe to squeeze in an early recording, but I'm also prepping three panels for the event. So likely the next episode will get a little delayed. And since, again, good Catholic boy gave up pop for Lent. No, a whole new no pop. No, a whole new pop until the episode after that. But we got some stuff lined up. Oh, baby. Got at least. Oh, baby, a triple. Got potentially six sodas. Holy buckets. Lined up. But some of them are maybe a bit of like two samey. So looking at least like three or four. No, I'm looking forward so, to that. Mouth sounds to look forward oh, to. Oh, yes. And I think we got all of the housekeeping stuff set up. We've been on a pretty good stretch. I I look back and we've been pretty good for a while. So I think now, after a two hour We're closing in on 100 episodes. True. Is this 99? I think this is 98. 98. Well, 99 with the the top 50 ranking, I think. Yeah, but we don't know that one. Uh, That's a bonus episode. Boner episode. But you know what? I feel like I want to unwind... 
maybe eat my dinner finally because I'm getting a little oh, rumbly in my tumbly. He's hungry. So I think I'm going to watch Up. Are you familiar with Up, Jacob? I'm the sad movie. Well, if you're not familiar, here's the plot synopsis. Oh, no. An idea from a young new co-worker would put an end to the constant travel of corporate downsizer Ryan Bingham. Jesus. So he takes her on a tour to demonstrate the importance of face-to-face -face meetings with those they must fire. While mentoring his colleague, he arranges hookups with another frequent flyer and his developing feelings for the woman prompt him to see others in a new light. Wait, this has George Clooney <laughs> in it too! This is up in the air! You got me again, Clooney! <laughs> How to talk to emo and goth bitches. How to fuck a bitch and kick her out. Five men that'll fuck your bitch. How to Pikachu a bitch. <laughs> How to make bitches great again. How to legally two-piece a bitch. <laughs> How to not give a fuck about a bitch. How to talk to a lesbian bitch. <laughs> How to turn a bitch into Drake. How to make a ball koozie for your nutsack. How to talk to a religious bitch. How to spot big bitches on day naps. <laughs> How to LeBron James a bitch. I got 400,000 followers and I'm pissed the fuck off. How to buzz light you a bitch. <laughs> How to talk to an attention whore. How to Spider-Man a bitch. How to stop jacking your dick. How to talk to a hood bitch. How to talk to a shy bitch. How to get out the friend zone with your dick. How to put a bitch in the alligator fuck. How to talk to a bad bitch. <laughs> Y'all, we done hit 300k. How to get your ass ate like your daddy did. How to Houdini a bitch. How to quit smoking cigarettes. How to make some jewelry with your dick. What to send when your text messages get cold. How to fuck with your baby in the room. A sneaky way to go through your bitch phone. How to turn a bitch into an angry dragon. The number one way to meet some bitches. How to sneak out the house. How to steam engine a bitch. One of the best hobbies to have as a cheater. <laughs> How to do the hamburger with your dick and your balls. How to get some head. How to fuck a sick woman. Look at How to send a big old dick pic. How to fuck your girl with your fingers. How to value these nuts across your chin. How to fuck your girlfriend's mama. You want to stick your dick in something that's not human? Well, I got you covered. <laughs>